Hey guys, Bill Spadia here. Welcome back to Common Ground with me, Bill Spadia, brought to you by New Jersey 101.5 FM. We have a lot to get to today. Today is the start of uh, the Hindu holiday Desara, which is is stands for the fight against evil, the fight for good to triumph over evil. And I thought, what a perfect way to talk about this holiday. As you know, uh, we were in Times Square for Diwali, Diwali in Times Square. And I thought, let's continue this theme and talk about the incredible contribution that Indian Americans have made, not just to New Jersey, but our great country. And I have a very special guest today. Uh, we are coming at you from uh, the Shirdi Sai Temple and Cultural Center in Islin. And we chose this spot because someone that uh, you may have heard his name, he is certainly one of the most world-renowned oncologists. He is a radiation oncologist. His name is Dr. Nori, and he is responsible for having this cultural center built. And he joins me now. Dr. Nori, please come onto the stage. Thank you, sir. So. So very nice to meet you. Nice meeting you. Sir. You want to go ahead and put the headphones on and we'll have a conversation. Um, Dr. Nori is, as I said, one of the most world-renowned oncologists. Doctor, first of all, it is a distinct honor and pleasure to meet you. Likewise. Thank you. Thank Likewise. you for being Likewise. here. Likewise. So let, let's, start with, um, let's start with a little bit about your career. I have to tell you, they gave me a list. And I looked at this list, and I thought, how much can one man accomplish in one lifetime? Uh, you've been working for nearly 50 years. Uh, I, I mean, I looked through this. Honestly, what struck me is that you are not only someone who has achieved some of the highest civilian honors in both India and America, but you are known as the top oncologist for treating women with cancer. So... Take us back to the beginning. Did you ever think that you would become this incredible voice for medicine and pioneering health? Thank you. Thank you, Bill, for giving me this opportunity to be with you today. I heard about you. I listened to your radio show. Thank you. And now I have the pleasure and honor of meeting you in person. Thank you. Thank you. It's my honor. Thank you. I come from India, as you know, mm -hmm. by now. And I was uh, trained in oncology in India as a cancer doctor. And uh, the treatments in those days, 50 years ago, were uh, not so great in mm. India. So my goal, my dream all along was to come to America, uh, develop most innovative techniques of treatment for mm -hmm. cancer, women and men, and uh, then take them to all developing countries, not only India other developing countries too, and make sure that whatever advances are made here in America are also being applied in other developing countries. I was going to say, now, have you seen that progress? I mean, you, you've, you've been at this from the level of uh, Cornell, uh, Sloan Kettering. I mean, these are some of the most world-renowned uh, cancer uh, institutes that we have anywhere. Uh, have you seen progress over the past... 50 years, and, and has that progress been, uh, was it, did it get hurt when we went through COVID? The, the, the progress is incredible in the last uh, 50 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, even in developing countries, uh, they are getting good treatment. Mm -hmm. I'm very, very happy to share with you, especially in India. Uh, so the, the many friends, not only in clinical treatment, in technological advances, mm -hmm and molecular biology advances. And uh, the knowledge we had many decades, few decades ago about cancer, how it develops, mm -hmm. why it spreads to certain organs, why not to other organs, all these are now known to us, how it, it spreads within the body. How much of lifestyle has to do with this, the water that you drink, the food that you eat, the exercise you get? Is it mostly um, handed down because you've got You've got the gene, or is it something that your lifestyle can actually solve for you? Very good. Very good question. Lifestyle makes a difference because in my body, in your body, mm -hmm. there are genes called oncogenes. That is cancer-producing genes. Everybody has that. But in most of them, 90% of them, they don't do anything, any harm to you. Mm -hmm. 
you live with them you die with them but if we change our lifestyle so badly you inv- you are inviting them to get excited <laughs> then <laughs> cancer starts yeah so it all most of it depends on us with what you drink what you breathe what uh, food you take whether you are keeping all your body immunity intact mm-hmm. all these are dependent on what you do so doctor let's talk about the differences i mean if you are in india we we see uh we see the pictures and the videos and you hear about some of the unsanitary conditions in some of the poorer neighborhoods where uh you know uh, drinking water is shared where animals are are either you know uh using it as a as a bathroom um but then you come to america where you've got almost an over uh civilized problem where all of our food is processed and we've got chemical particles in the water uh so it seems to me that on both ends of the spectrum where you have extreme poverty and even where you have extreme wealth both are prone to higher cancer numbers yeah uh that is the increasing number is one issue in both countries in india and in america mm-hmm. but everywhere uh, the conditions are improving even in developing countries Let's take for example india mm-hmm. what uh, uh, one good thing with me uh, blessed is i go to india a lot mm-hmm. in the last 50 years almost every 4 months i go there uh run free clinics uh, give lectures in major hospitals so i know the progress there mm-hmm. is significant progress made uh, not in par with america but uh, some extent yes but uh, yes uh, the conditions we live in certainly makes a difference here mm-hmm. and as you pointed out correctly we are on the other extreme end here <laughs> everything is boiled fried you know hamburgers and all this right. so delicious yeah <laughs> not good for you <laughs> so what we do what we drink yeah. uh, what uh, drink means not water <laughs> yeah. right uh, alcohol so what I, do you, what do you do what's a what's a personal best practice do you drink any alcohol do you only drink bottled water what what's a best practice that maybe our audience can take away yes, saying yes, what's I, one little thing that they can little, take from you it's not one little thing i'll tell you a few things <laughs> <laughs> all right i knew there'd be a list <laughs> i'm ready with the list i love it i love it <laughs> one is most important is to pay attention to your body mm-hmm. any symptom cough bleeding or a fever anything that is not getting resolved with routine treatment mm-hmm. seek advice don't sit on it one thing i always tell uh, the media wherever i go to other countries yeah. cancer won't happen overnight it is giving you messages every day mm. listen to what your body tells you that's number 1 okay any Good lump advice. in the breast that's not resolving you between periods any bleeding male female bleeding mm-hmm. in, from gynecological sites or a cough in a chronic smoker don't sit on that because why am i saying that if you can detect cancer early in any part of the body the cure rate is very high the treatment is very simple you don't have to shell mm. down millions of dollars a simple treatment will cure the cancer like what Li- like for example breast i will give you example of my office manager mm-hmm. uh work with me for many years she was going for mammography every year she is mm-hmm. uh, 60 years old mammography for every year mm-hmm. routinely and one year every year it was normal and one year the mammography showed a smallest lump in her mm. breast smallest lump we went backwards and compared all her mammograms before though it was not there mm. so this is something new developed between last mammogram and this mammogram mm-hmm. and what the treatment we offered her simple excision of the lump called lumpectomy followed by five treatments of radiation mm-hmm. that is what i mean by simple treatment simple. no chemotherapy five treatments over what a, a, a five month days. period five, five days. days yeah no chemotherapy no hormone therapy mm. and she is now 10 years following the wow. treatment wow how about that so this is what i mean early detection, detection. simple treatment simple treatment okay. less expensive you don't have to put a lot of dollars on that treatment mm-hmm. that's what i mean by detect it early go early and, and when you say lifestyle uh what would you constitute healthy eating 
Yeah, I'm coming to that. My, I just okay. finished my first point. <laughs> oh, I got it. I forgot. There's a list. That's it. Second point is pay attention to your family history. Family history. Mm -hmm. Your mother, your aunts, if they have breast cancer, be watchful. If you are 50, start going for mammography at 45 routinely mm -hmm. because you have a family risk. So even though you may not like your aunts and others, but pay attention to what <laughs> diseases they have. You don't have to get along with them yeah. to learn from them. Yeah. Same okay. thing uh, with the father, uncles. If they have prostate cancer, mm -hmm. pay attention. Go for a PSA test early. Mm -hmm. So family history is important. Third one is uh, lifestyle. Now comes your point. Got it. Lifestyle is whatever you like most, take it in moderation. If I want hair burgers, take it uh, with some vegetable content. Vegetable fiber will make it less absorbable. So you don't get into all the toxins in the body. Right. So anything that uh, improves your uh, uh, immunity, do that. For example, I told you high fiber, low fat diet. This is uh, not a rocket science. We have proved through papers, scientific papers, many, many times. Mm -hmm. High fiber, low fat diet has a profound influence on cutting down on breast cancer, colorectal cancer, prostate cancer, many, many cancers, including pancreatic cancer. Okay. So that's the uh, lifestyle. That, that's, that is a then, solid point. There's, yes, there's more. Yeah, yeah. There's one more. Oh, go ahead. Then in, in simple exercises. Don't sit uh, like a couch potato. Simple body movements and exercise. Can I ask you, I don't mean to interrupt you, but on the exercise, so I practice hot yoga yeah. five days a week, yeah. but I don't run any longer. I, 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 so is that okay? Yeah, perfectly okay. Perfectly okay. And is sweating. it about your heart rate? Is it about sweating? What is it about? It's sweating, heart rate, and mindset. Mind. Mindset. Yeah. yeah. You are reducing yeah. all those unnecessary bad hormones circulating in the body. Right, that extra stress, stress you have. Yes, yes. So these are all, I told you from the beginning, oncogenes are there everywhere in our bodies. Don't excite them. Hi, Bill. How's it going? Brian Kilmeade here. I want to congratulate you on the relaunch of Common Ground. It is great. I'm glad it's back. Also, I'm going to be in New Jersey, Red Bank, New Jersey. I'm coming there November 9th, 7 o'clock. Everybody who comes gets my brand new book. Teddy and Booker T. Hope to see everyone there. It's going to be a nice patriotism, motivation, inspiration, and most of all, fun. We all need it. See you there November 9th. Doctor, let's, let's talk about Shirdi Sai, um, why this site and what this temple means to uh, the Indian community in New Jersey, what it means to you, and, and was there a goal when you set out to start this? Yeah, good, very good. Thank you. Thank you for asking me that. Uh, Sai Baba, Siridi Sai Baba, is a saint uh, in uh, 18, late 1800 and 1900. Uh, he was in a small village. He doesn't have a name. His name is the name of the village. Siridi is a village. So his name oh, is Sri okay. Baba. Got it. And his teachings uh, were so profound that uh, I got uh, very attached to that. You know, I, when I was in medical school in a small town called Kurnool in Andhra Pradesh, whenever I was a little st I'm stressful during medical school, mm -hmm. I used to go to his mandir, we call it mandir, where the abode of Baba, mm -hmm. or a temple, uh, on the banks of a river called Tungabhadra, a ni very nice, very pleasant location. And after completing my work as a doctor, I used to go there and I feel very tranquil, very peaceful. Then I thought there's something here. Why am I feeling so happy, so tranquil? Mm. Then I started reading about him. Yeah. This is 60 years ago. Then the more I read, the more I'm getting attached to him. That right. is. These messages are very, very profound. That is, religious harmony, universal love. Don't hurt anyone, love everyone. And don't follow this ritualistic uh, spirituality. It's not necessary. Mm. If you are good in your heart and helpful, keeping others happy, put yourself at the last So one. more spiritual than religious. Yes. Mm. Spiritual. 
So that's the reason all the uh, you know, people who come here uh, are all highly educated doctors, engineers, accountants, computer scientists. And what I wanted to do when I came to America is why don't I try to establish a mandir or a board for Baba, Siridi Baba. And uh, the first one I did, uh, I established was in Long Island, New York, in 2001. Wow, the, the it's very, been a long journey. Long journey. The very first mandir in America, first Baba. So people you who believe in his preachings mm -hmm. used to come from all over the country, including this tri-state area here, Delaware, Washington, mm -hmm. Philadelphia, New Jersey, to Long Island. So they all requested me, look, it's taking us four hours on Belt Parkway to <laughs> come there. <laughs> so why don't you establish something here, which is regional in, in New Jersey? Yeah. Uh, then I found out this uh, place here, I renovated that, and then made this as another abode of uh, Baba. And people come here, everything is free here, yeah. everything is free here. I we, see people coming in, taking yeah, out plates of food. Yeah. And uh, free, free classes, and my team, whom you are going to meet, will explain a little more about mm -hmm. what we We're going to walk here. through as yeah. soon as we're done talking. We, we, they will explain what we do here, everything is free here and uh, give them uh, uh, students lectures, uh, like mm -hmm. uh, 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 SAT free classes, and uh, yoga, meditation, as you said, yoga, yeah. free meditation, yoga classes. And we do a lot of uh, charity work, a uh, lot of charity work, free medical camps, free blood drive for Red Cross, Red Cross here. Let me ask you, Doctor, is that what, if you could explain the tradition, uh, maybe it's just for sanitary reasons, is there a religious symbolism uh, to not wearing shoes inside and washing your hands before you enter the temple? Yeah. This is not only our mandir. Most of the religious centers uh, will keep because uh, we come from, you know, we don't know where we were before with the no. shoes. So it's a, <laughs> a tradition. A valid point. It, was a, it is a tradition all over India and all over America also uh, to leave the shoes outside. Mm -hmm. And you can come with your sock, but not with shoes. Okay. Probably a good practice entering anyone's home, if you really yeah, think yeah, about it, yeah. what we're walking through. Um, but let me ask you about the population in New Jersey. This is the highest or among the highest concentration of Indian Americans in the Edison Island area. What is it about New Jersey that has attracted uh, this, this cultural renaissance? I mean, you walk down uh, Oak Tree Road, etc. every store, every restaurant, it is uh, all Indian culture. And, and I have to tell you, doctor, it is one of the friendliest cultures that you can encounter. Everyone is smiling. You are always welcome in. Every, every area that I've been to when we first came to, uh, to this, this cultural center, uh, Raj and, and Santosh, when they introduced us, we felt like family on day one. Now that's, I, I probably, that was a longer question than I started with. Let's, let's go back to the beginning, because uh, I wanted to get that out and let you know how appreciative I am of the, uh, how the, the Indian community has embraced our message, embraced our show, embraced our friends and, and, and our relatives. Um, but I want to ask you, what is it about New Jersey? I think uh, New Jersey attracts a lot of uh, immigrants mm -hmm. because a lot of opportunities, a lot of, uh, in terms of IT, pharmaceuticals, mm -hmm. in pharma this is pharmaceutical capital this of the it. world, yeah. New Jersey. This is it. So a lot of uh, businesses attract people from outside. And uh, our people are uh, very easygoing, they don't get involved in uh, all kinds of activities. Right. They're family oriented. That's the reason you, you, wherever you go, you feel like you are inviting you, yes. like a family. So we, we are uh, the entire Indian society community wraps around a family unit, a family unit, just like in America. So that's one of the things we we may invite everyone to our house. I, we don't feel they are strangers. We feel yeah. that they are part of the members of the house. Yeah. Whether you go to a house or a mandir or a temple, uh, you feel you are invited. You feel that it's not a foreign place. Uh, it, it, it comes off in everyone you meet, even walking through the temple, the smiles, the handshakes. There's a, 
there's a feeling that they want you to be yeah. there. Yeah. It is yeah. inclusive and not exclusive. It's exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, uh, Doctor, I will tell you, if, uh, if you want to just tell me about the book real quick, because I want to get to our tour. Um, I have a I'm hoping you have a signed copy for me. I'm just throwing that out there. I ah, very signed, nice. Uh, this is, uh, you want to... Thank you. This is uh, my life journey. I call that uh, Mantada to Manhattan. Mantada is a small village of 10,000 people where I was born. Mm -hmm. And my journey to Manhattan, the capital of the world. Yeah. And then uh, my travel, my accomplishments, my friendships, my patients, patient stories, all that I put them together in one book. This happened uh, three years, two years ago. This is great. And you can change the title wherever, whatever you want to say. I said Matara to Manhattan. I love it. You can also say an American dream realized. <laughs> That's it. The American dream right here in Island, New Jersey. Dr. Nori, I want to thank you for being my guest. Thank Doctor, thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity. This was great. Thank you. Thank you.